Welcome back everyone to another weather at a glance video. In today's forecast, we're going to be going over what you can expect to see for your 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. We are expecting another very active season this season due to that ongoing La Nina pattern. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right, on our first slide, we're taking a look at that early April 2022 CPS official probabilistic ENSO forecast. So basically, with this complicated chart, we're looking at whether we're going to be dealing with an El Nino or La Nina within the upcoming days, or we could be dealing with also a neutral pattern. So what this is going to be showing you, we have to pay attention to the colors here. The blue is the La Nina forecast probability. The gray is the neutral forecast probability, which is in between in the middle. And El Nino is the red. So right here, you can see that our El Nino is way down on the scale, far below 10% in the upcoming months. Then we see our neutral forecast, which starts to become a little more likely as we get into about July, August, and September. But still, that is keeping it kind of down low. And then... We kind of see that La Nina start to fade down as well. And the lowest probability for a La Nina within the upcoming year or so is going to be August, September, and October. So as you can see, that's about that 50% mark. That's where the forecast starts to get a little bit rocky and kind of unsure what's going to happen. But as we look here right now for March, April, and May, this is going to be a 100% forecast. And as you can see throughout the April, May into June, we're going to see about a 90% forecast. And then as we move into May, June, and July, we're going to get down to about a 72% probability for that to happen. So we are going to see La Nina pretty much throughout the entire summer. Uh, and this is going li very likely to move into the winter months as well. Now, what this is going to do, uh, which we are going to go over on the next slide, is how this is going to affect your hurricane season. So we know that we're going to be in a La Nina this summer and into the fall months, but we have to figure out how this is going to actually affect your hurricane season, the Atlantic hurricane season for this year. All right, now on our next slide, we're taking a look at El Nino versus La Nina. And here you can see kind of what's going on between the two. So on your left, you can see the El Nino, which as you can see, it's less active for an Atlantic hurricane season. And this is due to more vertical wind shear over the Atlantic and more atmospheric stability. Now, when we're talking about storms, we want to talk about that instability. We want that unstable atmosphere for that storm development. Now with stability, that just basically means there's less lapse rates, there's less temperature difference with height, so there really can't be any convection going on in the atmosphere and thus no storm development. We need that movement of warm, moist air moving up into the upper levels of the atmosphere to form those clouds that you see in the atmosphere, and that forms those cumulonimbus cloud tops, uh, those thunderheads that we see developing off of the uh, Western Sahara and all of those areas off of Africa. And that's kind of where we see uh, the developing tropical systems. And we need less vertical wind shear too. And now a lot of people, uh, even myself when I was younger, I used to, when I first started out with this, I used to believe that you needed wind shear for all types of storms. Now with tropical storms, you want less wind shear. And on the contrary, for tornadoes and all of that, you want more wind shear uh, for those for those storms to develop for the updraft to rotate. But with the with the tropical systems, we want less wind shear because wind shear actually tears these systems apart. They develop their own circulation due to those pressure centers and the vertical wind shear kind of tears them apart. So that's what we want. Uh, we want less vertical wind shear. And that's what we see on the La Nina here. Now on the La Nina, we see a more active Atlantic hurricane season. And this is due to less vertical wind shear over the Atlantic and more atmospheric stability across all of the Atlantic. And we see that as we move into the later months, we see a lot of very unstable atmosphere. And especially in the Gulf of Mexico, if you look at some of the forecast models, which we're not going to go over in today's video, uh, but you will see that we have a lot of atmospheric instability over the Gulf of Mexico. And that's where those storms start to flourish is once they move away from Cuba and up into the Gulf of Mexico. That's where they kind of make their final big steps before they make landfall. And uh, you'll see that that's what we're going to see this season too, due to that high pressure blockage over Florida and Georgia off of the Atlantic coast. We're going to see more of a high pressure blockage that's going to kind of force these storms to go down in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so we are going to see more of an active Gulf hurricane season too, rather than the Atlantic coast. But we are going to see a very active uh, Atlantic hurricane season this year, most likely due uh, to the La Nina pattern. Now in our next slide, this is just going to be a basic kind of show and tell of what's going to be going on with this season. So really you see up on the top of the screen, we're going to be looking at that jet stream. And this is kind of just the average look of what the jet stream is going to look like this year. Now, we will see a bit of different turns and bends, you know, obviously, as we move throughout the season. But we will see just a general, we're going to see that trough over Texas. If you look down there over Texas, we see that dip down south in the jet stream. And then it moves back north and kind of forms a ridge over uh, 
kind of near Michigan, and it's going to keep the southeast kind of dry. We're going to see a lot of uh, high pressure around that area. Now, we're still going to get rain for those areas, but a lot of the time, we're going to see a high pressure system off the Atlantic. Now, this won't really affect areas such as Tennessee and all of those areas where we kind of see this high pressure ridge, uh, but we will see a high pressure system develop around those areas and move off to the Atlantic. That's going to be that southeast ridge that we were talking about. And then we see that little dip, that little trough around Pennsylvania and New Jersey. That's going to be a consistent around this year as well. And then we're going to see that big uh, rise. And that's going to be due to that North Atlantic gyre here, that giant high pressure system that we see out in over the Atlantic. Uh, and that's going to be forcing that jet stream to move more northward. And then it's going to likely take some more dips and turns as it moves over to Europe. But as you can see, this is kind of a consistent look at what this is going to look like for the United States with that jet stream. And the jet stream actually has a lot of influence on this as well uh, because of those dips and rises. And right here, you see that high pressure system, that southeast ridge that kind of has been consistent for the last few years during our Atlantic hurricane season, and that's formed that blockage. So big systems that have moved up the Atlantic coast are not really going to be likely this year as they have been in past years. And that's due to that high pressure system blockage that will be forcing these systems to take a more southerly turn into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, at times, this will kind of fade, and we won't see as much of this high pressure system. And especially if that's the same time that a tropical system moves through, then we will have more of a likelihood for a system to ride up the Atlantic coast. But most likely, most systems are going to be headed for the Gulf of Mexico or more southward towards the uh, coasts of Mexico off of the Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to be keeping things kind of dry hurricane wise for the Atlantic coast. Now we will still see probably a couple systems move through throughout the season, but we're going to mainly take a turn for the Gulf of Mexico, just like the last two years that we have seen. Uh, and this is going to continue to be active until this La Nina fades. All right. So finally, we're going to go over our specific thoughts for where this is really going to be happening. What is my forecast for the United States for this hurricane season? Now on this map, you can see we have a very active region for the Gulf of Mexico. Now this active region includes the McAllen area, to the New Orleans area, all the way to the Tampa Bay area that we can see. This is going to be a Gulf of Mexico hurricane season for sure. Uh, once these systems come off the Atlantic into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, what we don't know is how many storms there are going to be this year. And obviously we can't predict the exact number of how many storms, but I do believe the majority of Atlantic systems will be headed towards the Gulf of Mexico. Now we see a less active Atlantic coast hurricane season here, but we do see the potential for some systems to ride up along that Atlantic coast. And that's due to that high pressure blockage. If that moves out of the way, then we will have more likelihood for an Atlantic ride up along the coast. But we're going to mostly see these storms kind of take more of a turn for the Gulf of Mexico. And the hotspots here for these systems will likely be anywhere from the McAllen area to all the way to the Tampa Bay area, including New Orleans, Louisiana. That's going to be another hotspot that we have to watch for these storms. Uh, but anyway, they're going to be moving through the Gulf of Mexico for sure. Um, and the question is, how many systems will we see for the Atlantic coast? Because um, we don't really know if there will be too much probability for an Atlantic coast. So I do have to say this is another uh, safe year for the Atlantic coast not to have to worry about too many storms. Now, the one variable that we do have, again, is that high pressure blockage. And if that does move out of the way, don't be surprised if one or two systems do come through and they could potentially be stronger when they move up the Atlantic coast. But that is unlikely for this year because of that high pressure blockage and that southeast ridge. All right. I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video. I would ask you to consider subscribing for more U.S. forecasts free of charge. And I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.